Hi, I'm Swetha. I'm a manufacturing engineer at Fictive. And I'm Leanne Cushing, the CEO of Demovi and captain of Team Valkyrie on BattleBots. Today we tore down the Anki Vector robot. The Anki Vector is a consumer robot. It's supposed to make your desk more entertaining and bright. It uh, tells you the weather, you can pet it, it has a cube, uh, and recently the company went bust. The three features that we're going to talk about are the head assembly, the array of plastic parts, and the design for assembly for this product. The first feature we're going to talk about is the head assembly. We first thought that because the head is sort of the eyes and ears and interaction point for the end user, that's where we'd see a lot of the, the cost for this uh, robot, but turns out that's not the case at all. Um, you have a really basic board, simple display, uh, and then the one thing that's tricky is actually the plastics are where everything gets expensive because everywhere, like every motor interaction has a separate gearbox, separate plastic pieces, different setups, and then obviously like as we go through it, there is a ton of custom parts. So the plastic parts are made of different materials. Uh, the clamshell for the head is made of polycarbonate, whereas these pieces are made of PC ABS and some of the other parts are made of just ABS. So these three different materials can cause different expenses when molding all the different parts. Um, in addition, these pieces for the ears, they look really similar, but they're mirrored, so they require two separate molds and that can add extra expenses, those molds can be pretty expensive. And then within these parts alone, they're quite complicated with the different gear teeth and the various um, bosses that need to be molded into the parts. So this is sort of where the larger cost lies in making this particular part of the product. The second feature of interest that we focused on was realizing how many various plastic parts and custom molds there are in this little robot. So the first part we're going to look at is the cube that Vector plays with. Um, this cube is made of plastic and has metal bits that are embedded in, but also has rubber over molds for the grips on the corners, which can be a huge cost driver. We have uh, some of Vector's arms. These are the drive arms specifically, and while they do look pretty much the same, they are mirrored, and then they also have different features like this actually sets into um, the gear that the drive motor for the arms uh, has and that makes it so this has to be a separate mold which is again is an additional mold cost. Then we're going to move on to the drive wheel. Um, this wheel is interesting because it has all of these tiny gear teeth um, which have to all be machined into a mold for the part to be injection molded and that can create a really complex mold that requires micro machining which can be a huge cost driver. Um, this part also has a different finish and different material than some of these other parts which means it had to have been molded separately. This is the power button and LED indicator. It is made of two different materials which means that one material would have had to have been molded and then the other one molded over that which means two molds would have been required which is a larger cost driver. This is uh, half of the chassis, uh, sort of a clamshell part that you have two sides. They're supposed to play nice with each other, but because they have so many features and they have to integrate with everything else, you're going to have really tight tolerances and you're going to kind of have a, a pain putting the whole thing together if you aren't paying attention to that. So they actually heat staked another material onto the inside of this to protect the sensors from damage and that additional process, usually done manually, can add an, a further cost. The third feature of interest we're going to be discussing is the design for assembly for the electronics of the robot. So this is the main board in the robot. It manages power as well as drive. Um, so you have some basic little servos that they're just populated on the board, that's fine. But then you have this other piece which has a JST connector that has to be threaded through the plastic mold part and then populated on the board, which can be time intensive and I mean, generally I wouldn't want to do it. Uh, and then on the other side you have the power and the terminals which wedge onto this plastic piece that sits on the bottom of the robot but it also has features that has to integrate and set onto the board which can be also a pain, it was a pain to tear apart. Then we have the feature of the Anki that you can pet and make the robot purr and the difficult part is this wire has to loop through this top part and fit inside of these channels and get looped through before it's soldered back onto the board which can add a lot of manual labor and a lot of time that can additionally add cost. So we did this teardown to learn more about this robot, how it was built and why it was built in a certain way and to give us a clue as to how and why Anki had to shut its doors in late April. As we found as we went through it, like there's a lot of little complicated nitpicky things. There's a ton of molds 
and I don't think like their asking price of $250 really fits for the scale of the product and how custom it is. And some of the processes that we had were not scalable because they were very manual and at a high quantity it would not have been a sustainable way to build a product, whereas some of the other manufacturing processes we had we counted probably 30 unique parts, so we would have needed 30 unique molds, which is not scalable for something that is such a low quantity. Basically, the lower the quantity of builds you have, the more expensive those builds are, especially when you have to take into account these thousands of dollars of each tooling cost for each mold. And as we mentioned before, some of the molds are extremely complex. Some required over molds and there were multiple materials and multiple colors and finishes of those materials, which drove up the cost a lot. Thank you for watching our teardown of the Anki Vector robot, and thank you for stopping by at Ficto. Thanks for having me. Uh, this has been great and a different type of robot destruction. Uh, it's been fun. For more content and teardowns like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our blog at fictive.com blog.